Next segment, we've got a special guest in studio, the new Alamogordo Tigers varsity baseball coach, uh, Michael Crabtree, here with us today. Coach Crabtree, how are you doing? Doing great, Charles. Thanks for having me on. Uh, happy to have you here. And, um, well, <laughs> first off, how often uh, do you get uh, people with the, the name Michael Trapp? You had it first, though, right? <laughs> yes, I am older than him, so I did have it first. But, yes, every time I meet somebody new, especially if it's not in person, yeah. then I uh, for sure get it, but even in person. So it's a good joke, you know, to get started when you meet somebody new. Absolutely. I was going to say, I mean, if, and especially living in Texas where you were, I mean, him being such a big star mm-hmm. out there at Texas sure. Tech. So, anyway, on, on, off with that stuff. Um, first off, how are you enjoying your time so far in Alamogordo? You've been here uh, getting settled in for about a month now, right? Yeah, we're, me and my wife are getting close to a month being here and, and we're loving it um you know we, we bought us a house and getting settled into our new home and we fell in love with the town and we we still love it here we're like i said we're being here about a month now and everything's great fantastic well we're certainly happy to hear that and we're happy to hear that both you and your wife you know uh, mr perry had mentioned that both you and your wife are going to be working in alamogordo public schools so nice to have both you guys uh, within the system and Getting ready for school, obviously, too. That All that stuff gets started uh, coming up tomorrow, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, me and her being new to the district, we start our teaching training tomorrow, and then uh, we'll go into next week, and we're excited. She'll be teaching sixth grade at Chaparral, and I'll be at the high school level, and uh, we're excited to get started in the classroom, you know, as well. Well, we'd love to certainly get to, to learn a, a little bit about you, and, you know, I had a chance to look at, you know, some of your, uh, I guess you'd say stats in terms of what was on your resume, but uh, you're somebody that's obviously played baseball and been around baseball probably uh, your entire life right oh yes for sure um you know played other sports but baseball has always been my first love and you know what i was best at so i was you know blessed to have a great playing career in high school and college and then moved on to the coaching scene and i knew i wanted to be a coach as soon as playing playing was over and that's what i'm doing and continue to do today how, how as a player how would you have described yourself and what kind of player would did, did you think of yourself as um you know i was i was that hard worker hard nosed guy that you know played the game right you know did what he was you know supposed to and you know respected the game and you know put the work in that necessary to be successful is that what you you know appreciate about a player that's willing to put in the work more than anything else out there on the field oh for sure and and so far uh, that's what i've seen out of our our, our guys here at Allen mcgordo um you know we have a bunch of hard working kids that want to get out there they want to be great baseball players they want to do what's necessary necessary to be successful for themselves to make themselves better and for the team yeah so we had a there's a, a great group of young guys that are out there and as you were telling me you've had a number of kids out there during the summertime that have about been out there working with, with you and to, to have good numbers during the summertime that's a, a huge positive right yes and especially since i wasn't able to be here all summer this summer um you know we got moved in on july 7th so we've been here a little less than a month and um you know i just got here we got settled and i started getting the word out and to people that i've met and uh, saying hey we're going to start having open you know voluntary practices and so we've got 11 in so far you know in less than a month and uh that's great we've had 30 or so kids that's come out from incoming eighth graders all, all the way to seniors and uh you know i'm excited about what we got at the you know going potentially potentially at the varsity level right now and our young guys that we've had coming out we've had 13 going to be eighth graders came out this morning and uh it's great to see you know the young numbers you know in the program yeah absolutely to see those guys out there on the field and those are you know a group when we were talking about you know some of the the junior programs and things like that it's good to have the, the they want to continue and they want to play high school baseball uh at alamogordo that's something good to see oh for sure you know that's a goal and I, i've met some people in town i want to keep on meeting guys people that are in the you know the youth sports and youth baseball and uh you know our goal is to you know build them and be successful and we want all the all the kids out there to be excited to be you know alamogordo tigers when they get to the varsity level Oh, and obviously you've been coaching, and most recently uh, you were at Kermit High School in Texas? Yes, yeah, so I was at Kermit High School as head baseball coach down there. It's uh, outside the Midland, Odessa, Texas area. Um, you, you were coaching there most recently, but, you know, what's – I mean, in, in terms of, you know, teaching kids about the game and when they get to the varsity level, obviously these, these are kids are baseball players. They know how to play the game, but what are you trying to impart to them and to help them to, to be better out there on the field? Um, you know, fundamentals at every level is important. It doesn't matter if we're doing little league or if you're going up to, you know, big leaguers doing spring training. So we have to be able to play the game right. We have to be fundamentally sound. Um, you know, we swing wooden bats here in New Mexico, and so our kids are swinging with what professionals do. So we've got to be able to throw strikes on the mound, catch the ball behind them, and, you know, at the plate we got to be able to put the ball in play and put pressure on, you know, the defense to manufacture some runs. How is that for you? I mean, what do you think of the, the idea of the fact New Mexico is, I think, one of two states in, in – uh, in terms of high schools that play with wooden bats, do you like that? Would you rather? I mean, I don't want you to criticize whether we like wooden bats or not, but your thoughts on on wooden bats being used? You know, I like I like the wooden bats. Um, you know, in, in Texas and other states, they've gone to a BB core bat that's you know not quite as hot as it used to be, and so it's similar to wood as well, but still wood is different. And I like it. I just think it makes more parity in the game, and I think here at Alamogordo, 
if we we play fundamental baseball, you know, we play hard nose, play the game right, we throw strikes, catch the ball behind them, then we should be able to be in every game. It's interesting that hasn't been a, a bigger issue. I mean, I, haven't, I really haven't heard too much when they switched to, to wooden bats. So, I, mean, I think it was four, four or five years ago now that we went to wooden bats. There really hasn't been a discussion about the, the cost-wise of that. That, I think, has always been the issue with continuing to use, you know, aluminum bats or you said BB mm-hmm. core bats. Um, seems like if, you know, more states could use wooden bats, that's probably better and maybe safer for the kids as well. Well, yes, and, it, you know, it could be it's safer for sure. I mean, the, the exit velocity on the wooden bats not going to be quite as much. And uh, cost-wise, you know, that is an issue, um, you know, but as far as, you know, funding a program, we, you know, there's composite bats out there that, that rarely break that you can have. And then, obviously, the, you know, the kids are – able to buy their own individual you know real wood bats if they'd like to yeah absolutely um from and not not in terms of getting into specifics you know what have you seen you know pitching wise fielding wise from the guys that you've seen out there um you know you talked about the varsity group that's there but what have you seen in terms of what kind of drills that you guys been uh, doing from this group so far you know we've been able to just kind of introduce stuff and it's it's more most importantly why i wanted to get it going as soon as i got here just so i could see what we have and meet the kids and start developing that relationship with them and and we've started to kind of just laying the foundation for what we're going to do in the spring and throughout the fall and uh you know, get doing some individual stuff as well as team stuff. We've split it up where we had we had numbers that were very I was happy with. So we split it up where we had eighth and ninth graders in one practice and they had tenth, eleventh, twelfth graders at the later practice and it's it's worked out really well as far as getting started. Fantastic. And what what's in terms of, you know, the off season, you know, you guys will start, you know, really working hard, you know, getting ready for the start of the season, January, you know, uh, and February. But uh, over the next few months, I mean, what are some of the things that you want to make sure gets done and, you know, gets imparted to, to these guys that are going to be uh, working with the baseball program? Yeah, and during the school day, we'll, we'll have the period where we'll be able to do our strength and conditioning during the school day. And uh, so we'll be able to do that part of the aspect, which is, you know, just as important, you know, in the off season to get our guys stronger, and especially hitting with wooden bats. We got we got to have the strength to be able to, you know, swing a wooden bat. And uh, so we'll be doing that during the school day, and then we'll, we're going to go twice a week um, during the fall and gets us to our maximum time that I'm able to practice with them. And uh, we're just going to keep on doing fundamentals and, you know, start tweaking stuff and, you know, implementing team stuff and uh, moving forward and building so that we are ready to go when February 1st, comes around to start our season and and make sure we're ready to peak in the spring where you know when it matters fantastic so i'm with michael crabtree he's the new bet uh, be- how about baseball varsity coach over at alamogordo high school i'm having issues talking there um and he's also going to be involved with the alamogordo tiger football program too uh, you've been working with coach hooper and uh how has that been for you i know for one thing it's been hot out there working in the uh with the guys but uh first couple days of practice uh, how's the experience been for you Oh, it's been going great. Um, you know, I met Coach Hooper when I first came down here and interviewed, and, uh, you know, I've always – I've coached football as my second sport always in Texas, and I'm excited that I was able to get to continue that here in New Mexico. And uh, I like Coach Hooper. Uh, we've been practicing been going great. I'm excited about our group. You know, I've got to watch them some in the summer, and now getting them seeing out there, you know, last night on our new turf field and uh, seeing them getting after it. I'm definitely excited about what we have on the football field as well. How, how was that for the guys? The guys really enjoy the uh, being out there on the field turf for the first time. Oh yes, they they were they were excited. I pulled up um, about an hour before practice, and there was guys already going out there, and, and they were ready, you know, ready to go and excited about it. And it's a great facility, and it's going to be great for our practice schedule and just getting you know getting the most out of our team. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody in the community is definitely excited about seeing that new turf field uh, that's out there. Um, Moving on to, to a couple other things, I mean, I kind of wanted to go back, and we didn't really touch uh, a lot, but you had uh, one heck of a college baseball career. I saw that you were inducted into um, it was the, the Hall of Fame there at uh, is it Houston Baptist. Yes, Houston Baptist is where I played. Talk played about, at. Talk about the experience of playing there. Um, it was a great experience. Um, I started out at junior college, played at junior college. Um, I grew up in Canyon, Texas, Canyon High School. Uh, went to play junior college and then moved on to Houston Baptist for my last two years. And uh, Houston Baptist University is a great school. Uh, we had a great program, um, and I was blessed to be on some great teams and you know fortunate enough that i was able to you know help them out winning some games and uh was able to win some you know awards on, along the way and uh yeah so I, nothing but great things to say about hbu and um, i was very excited about you know my playing career how about i mean as a coach i mean you're out there obviously to go out there and win games but you know we hear we hear obviously the coaches you know one of their other you know goals is you know if they've got guys that are you know 
capable talent to, to go on and play at the college level. You know, how do you balance that? You know, as being a head coach and you know trying to maybe help some guys if they you know want to continue to play after high school. Uh, how, how do you view that part of your job? Oh yes, for sure. I mean, obviously, any kid that wants to play at the next level, I want to do whatever everything I can to, you know, to help them. And, you know, my coaching goal is each, every, every player we have, we're going to try to make them as best we can individually and the result going to make us the best team we are. And uh, I have some experience when I first started coaching, um, I was at the junior college level. So I have some contacts out there and understand the recruiting process some that I'll be able to help these guys, you know, on, in the process, what might be a good fit for them and, you know, try to try to get them in as much exposure as possible. Well, I think what's interesting as well is, I mean, we obviously, people want to focus on, you know, division one colleges and things like that, but there's so many opportunities to continue continue playing baseball after high school you mentioned juco mm -hmm. and you know there's nai division three and all that stuff mm -hmm. there's there's so many places that kids can have the opportunity to go out there and play right oh for sure you know i mean obviously you're not going to have every player or program in your program be a division one player but i think if somebody really wants to play and they were willing to do what's necessary to put the work in and you know you might have to go different places or different parts of the country but i think there's plenty of opportunities and levels out there and i'll do my best you know to help any player that wants to do that Something else that uh, you've been involved in as uh, you were a scout for a Cleveland Indians organization, right? Yes. Uh, when I switched over to the, the high school, um, I took a varsity assistant job at Dumas High School. Um, I'd met guys through the Cleveland Indians, and um, he need, they needed some help in West Texas. And so uh, the last four years, I was able to be a – um, a area, not an area. I was under an area scout for that area, and because they have such a big area, they need guys in different parts to help them. And I was able to turn in guys and follow up guys with them, and it was just good being associated with them and being able to work with them and kind of learn some stuff. And I actually read an article recently. I think in Sports Illustrated, they were talking about uh, Drew Henson, who was the you know former quarterback and baseball player who'd become a scout, and he said he didn't he didn't realize how much there is that goes with being a scout. I mean, that's a complicated, really complicated job to do it well, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there's, you know, all kinds of, you know, stats and different types of, you know, each organization has techniques that they use to evaluate players and grade players and figure out where the best fit is. And it's a job I liked helping out with. Um, I like coaching kids, though, and, and like doing the coaching part of it. So it's not something I'd ever want to do full time um, just because I like the coaching part of it. And scouting is kind of a individual base where you're going and, you know, evaluating and going from there. Do you feel like that in terms of the scouting, does that help you in your coaching in any way? In terms of being able to, to recognize certain things, or is it just a completely different beast in that way? Um, no, I mean it's, it's similar to you know when I was recruiting, you know, in junior college. Um, you know, you're just different techniques that you're and different evaluation methods, and I think it just helps me, you know, with, with the players I have, you know, to know what these guys are looking for, and you know, try to you know prepare them as best I can. Yeah, and to, I, I mean, I got to think, you know, and when it comes to the coaching level, maybe recognizing things that guys can necessarily improve on. But you talked about fundamentals. Um, you know, maybe seeing something that somebody's doing wrong and being able to help them out with that. I got to think at the high school level where you probably see those kind of things a lot with younger kids, you can probably, you know, pick up on that maybe a little bit easier, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, you know, it's going to be going from, you know, from before eighth grade to getting into high school baseball and moving up to the varsity level. You know, there's going to be all kinds of techniques and fundamentals that we're going to build on. But, you know, our goal is that we're going to teach it the same from, you know, C team up and hopefully we get it, you know, in the youth leagues too. And we know we have our teaching methods and our fundamentals that our kids are learning and the, the quicker they learn them and they're, they're getting more efficient at them, then the better we're going to be when we get to varsity. What do you see as the, you know, the biggest things, and you talk about fundamentals, you know, specifically, but, you know, what do you see as the biggest things that maybe kids you'd like to see them get away from? I'm not necessarily talking about this group, but just in terms of, you know, coaching over the years that you'd like to see them, th this is the way you should do it, get away from this and work on it. I mean, is there one thing that you can really pinpoint on or is it a number of different things there? for those kids um, I, mean, I think you know you have your base fundamentals you know that you believe are necessarily to do it but you know every kid's different and you got to take what that kid does and and make it the best you can and you know improve him but there's not necessarily a cookie cutter way to throw a baseball to hit a baseball to pitch a baseball you know obviously there's certain things that are important you know to each each element of that but I think you just got to take the, you know take what the kid can do and uh, work with them and keep developing developing him to where he's going to be successful when he you know gets gets moving up in the levels all right, well, I tell you what, we're looking forward to seeing uh, what this team can do coming up in, in the springtime. Uh, I know you guys are going to continue to work hard throughout the off season. Um, this is uh, – I, I think everybody, when, when we, we looked and saw the you, your path to get here to Alamogordo, we were all really excited to see all the stuff you've involved in, um, you know, from being a player to being a coach. And I, I say more than anything else, uh, you seem like you're, you're hungry to, to get out there and, and, you know, be out there on the diamond with those guys every day. Would that be a good way to describe your attitude? Oh, yeah, for sure. I definitely have a passion for it, you know, just like I did as a player. And, you know, you have long days, but it doesn't ever feel like we're working. You know, you're out there, you enjoy it, you enjoy working with the kids. And 
I'm very excited, you know, to be able to be here in Alamogordo and blessed to be given this job and, you know, the opportunity to lead the baseball program. Coach Crabtree, we're super excited to have you here, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing the baseball team in the in the spring. And, of course, we'll see you out there with the football team uh, coming up throughout the fall. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon. For sure. Thank you. All right. That's Coach Michael Crabtree, the new varsity head coach at Alamogordo High School, and we'll be sure talking to him uh, as we get closer to baseball season, and we'll look forward to that. And, again, he's going to be out there with the Alamogordo uh, varsity, and he's actually going to be the JV coach for uh, Tiger football.